following the 2021 NFL draft, in your opinion, which do you feel like, or which NFL franchise do you feel like improved the most? I've got to start with this Chargers. So they obviously want to build around Justin Herbert. They have that young quarterback. First thing they did is they went out and they got a mauler in Rashawn Slater. This guy sat out the 2020 season. Year before that, didn't allow any sacks, only one hit on the QB. So they have someone that that really can get it done up front. He also is very versatile. You can play him at tackle, guard, center. He can play every position on the offensive line. So you, you have to be excited about that. Also is very athletic. I think Panay Sewell uh, did a better job in getting to the second level, but Slater is right there. You see him all the time reaching out to linebackers and, and just constantly being a, a nuisance to defenders. Next up, they got Asante Samuel Jr., who I was just talking about. This is a pro's pro. His dad played in the pros, Patriots, Eagles, et cetera. He played very well at Florida State. Didn't give up more than 200 yards all of last season. That, that's unheard of. And also had – always was getting his hands on the ball. Had more than 20 pass deflections there too. Great hip movement, great footwork. Just a very fundamental player. Chargers got Josh Palmer in the third round. Wide receiver out of Tennessee. Didn't have huge production. So his best season – Last year, had about 475 yards, four touchdowns. That doesn't sound like the numbers of a, of a big-time pro receiver. However, he, he's got the intangibles. When you look at how he adjusts the football, whether it's a sideline catch or it's in the end zone, he can do that. And, I, and if anyone can maximize his talent and get in the ball, it's going to be Justin Herbert. We saw what he did last year. I think he's going to get the most out of Palmer. Chris Rump the second. This guy fell to the middle of the fourth round, but once again, similar to when you're looking at a Jamar Johnson, who should have went higher in a draft as a safety, the same was the case with Chris Rump. So he was top five as an outside linebacker on ESPN. He's, he's been looked at as an edge rusher, so he's not always considered a linebacker. And even in that category, he's got to be at least in your top 10, constantly getting after the quarterback. Last two seasons, he had over... 10 plus tackles for loss, had 14 and a half sacks over the last two seasons as well. This guy can get after the quarterback. He fell because could be a tweener. Whenever scouts in NFL aficionados cannot clearly, clearly define what you're going to be, that's when you tend to fall in a draft. And that happened with, with this case. Next up in the, in the sixth and seventh rounds, I think the Chargers did a great job of, of addressing special teams. They were one of the worst units, not just last year, but in NFL history when it comes to opposing uh, field position for their opponent there. So got to do a better job there. They got Nick Neiman, a linebacker out of Iowa, and also Mark Webb, who played at Georgia. I think those can both be significant contributors for special teams for the Chargers. So that's my first team that I think did a great job, and they're going to be a lot better next year because of all the value they found throughout the draft. I like what the LA Chargers did a lot. And you talked about the first two picks, uh, especially Rashawn Slater. The fact that he fell out of the top 10 where many mock drafts had him going uh, to maybe like number eight to the Carolina Panthers or at least somewhere in that top Mm -hmm. 10. Even some people saying that he's better than Panay Sewell. And then Asante Samuel in some mock drafts was creeping into that first round, late first round territory. And for the Chargers to get him in the second round is a big steal as well. So the Chargers, your first team. Who's your next team? Jets. J-E-T-S. Jets, Jets, Jets. So we talked about Justin Herbert for the Chargers and them getting their quarterback last year. Well, the Jets are getting their quarterback this year, and they did that with Zach Wilson. I think he can be someone that's very good at being mobile outside the pocket. So, a lot, and, and let me back up. A lot of folks want to know, how can Zach Wilson be successful, especially with the Jets? Didn't look very good on offense. They haven't been a team that's been able to even protect the quarterback very well, whether that was Joe Flacco or whether that was Sam Darnold. So I think Zach Wilson being someone who can move outside of the pocket and make throws on a, on a run is going to be great. Him also getting the ball out of his hands very quickly is going to be an asset. And then him having anticipation. So many quarterbacks want to wait until a receiver gets open. Well, within the NFL, you don't have that time. You don't have that leeway 
with elite defenders. So Zach Wilson can do all those things. I like that for his intangibles. I compare him to Ryan Fitzpatrick, that fire, that edge. He plays with that. But from a kill, a skill set perspective, he has that Russell Wilson in him. He has that anticipation. He has that great deep ball throw. He has that polish um, that you see in his game. Next up, the Jets got Elijah Vera Tucker. So you got to protect your asset. You got to protect the quarterback at all times. And so they get Vera Tucker at 14. Slater went one pick ahead with the Chargers. It's interesting to, to know or think about what the Jets have got Slater instead, if they could have. We'll never know for sure. But Vera Tucker, I think he's right up there, a notch behind both Panay Sewell and Vera Tucker. And, uh, and, and also Slater, but Vera Tucker's right there. This guy, once he gets his, your, his hands on you, you're done. You're finished. Uh, he also is able to move from tackle to guard as well, so it shows that versatility. Next up, they got another Elijah, and Elijah Moore went early in the second round there. I think that's going to be great for them. I talked about how Zach Wilson is going to need to get the ball out of his hands quickly. Well, Elijah Moore is someone who can make a lot happen, even if he's catching out of the backfield if that's going to be on a wheel route, if that's going to be a screen, he can make plays at the line of scrimmage and take it, take it 20, 25 yards. He can make plays going across the field on slants or drag routes. He also can run the go route as well because he's super fast. Uh, on top of that, he's got excellent hands. So a very, very good wide receiver, I think, is going to, to really do well there for the Jets. Michael Carter is a guy that they got in the fourth round. This dude had over a thousand yards in his junior had over 1200 yards in his senior year. Um, and is someone that can play a role in a kick return game and a receiving receiving game. He actually led the, the league, led the FBS last year for yards per rush was 7.98, almost eight yards per carry. That's crazy to think about. I think he'll be an asset out of the backfield, line him up with a slot receiver. Once again, with special teams, they also were able to get Jason Pinnock, in the fifth round, this guy was a corner from Pittsburgh and led his team interceptions with three. That's good value when you're talking about the fifth round. So that's going to be an asset. And then last but not least, you get Hamza Nasruddin, safety out of FSU. So we talked about the safeties before and getting value late or, or, or down later in in what your list would be for safeties. I think you're going to get that with Nasruddin. 6'3", 215. And someone that's going to be an impact in the run game and also can stick with receivers. He, well, he can use some help in coverage. I'll say that he's not, you can scratch out, stick with the receivers per se. He's going to be someone that more so is going to be in that front seven in the box being helper there. And he's going to have to improve with his coverage skills. But still, great pick when you're looking at the sixth round. I think that's going to play, pay dividends for the Jets and their depth. Yeah, Nasruddin, a pretty cool story that I saw was uh, he used to play basketball and uh, he was very good at dunking in high school. So th the fans, the students of the opposing team would actually go up to him and say, hey, this player on my team, make sure you dunk on him. I don't know whether they hated that player or what. They just knew that he was amazing at dunking. So, uh, yeah, but the Jets, heavy offense offensive picks uh, pretty early on. You saw that Zach Wilson, number two, that was pretty obvious from the start what they were going to do once they traded Darnold. And then you just make them into an investment and you add in weapons and free agency like Tevin Coleman and Corey Davis. Now you got Elijah Moore to pair up with Corey Davis. And then Michael Carter, like you said, is going to be a dark horse in the running game to pair up with Tevin Coleman. So I like what they did and to protect Zach Wilson as well with Elijah Vera Tucker. Uh, so we talked about the Jets. Now you've got one more team that improved after the NFL draft. Who is it? Yes, it was the Miami Dolphins. And granted, there were tons of teams that thought did well. Vikings, the Falcons. There were some teams that really did a great job of staying where they were at and, and getting better on both sides of the ball. Speaking about both sides of the ball, I think the Dolphins did that. Because you've got a young quarterback in Tua Tungabailoa. You wanted to get him some weapons. I think you did that with Jalen Waddell. At the top of the draft, these receivers were all elite, or, or at least that was our analysis coming out. I, I would believe so, whether you're talking Devontae Smith, Jamar Chase, or, of course, Kyle Pitts. They get Waddle, a guy who averaged 21 yards per catch, his worst game outside of the national championship, because, of course, we all know he was hurt in that national championship. 
So his worst game be outside of that was six catches for 120 yards against Ole Miss. I mean, that's crazy to even think about. He's also someone that can can be a threat in the return game, can be a threat coming out of the backfield, all in, in the rounds. Very easy to get him the ball and just watch him watch him go after that. Next up, they got Jalen Phillips on the defensive side of the ball. This guy came out of Miami. He first attended UCLA in 2017-2018, had some injuries, ankle, wrist, concussions, and thought that he was not going to be able to continue his career. Had the ability to transfer to Miami in 2019, sat out that season and played in 2020, had a big-time season there, and, and that's ultimately what got him picked 18th in, in, in the draft to the Dolphins. Eight sacks last year, 15 and a half tackles for loss. This guy is 6'6", 260. I want to see what he can do at the next level, and that should definitely aid their pass rush. Now, they moved on and got some help in the secondary. So go back two levels from the defensive line, and you get Javon Holland. This guy, 27 career games, nine interceptions, can also play returner. Very, very polished. Someone that can cover slot receivers. And the question might be, what separates the first two safeties from the rest of the pack? Because I talked about my guys who I think are going to be steals. Well, what really separates these guys like Trayvon Moreg and also Javon Holland from the rest is how good they are in coverage, whether it's slot receivers, running backs. They can run toe-to-toe with a lot of guys. Where they need help at is in tackling and in the run game. And I think you'll want to see Javon Holland improve there. but definitely a playmaker and uh, and it would be great to see him play with the opportunistic defense like the Dolphins we saw Mika Fitzpatrick was able to do and put up those huge numbers Holland should fit in that same mold next up they get Liam Eichenberg in the second round 10th pick some scouts some analysts had this guy as top five top six in their all in their in their tackles they also thought he might go in the first round very early pick in the second round He did not give up a sack after week five of 2018. Wow. So, yeah, he played in 2019. He he wasn't like one of these guys that opted out in 2020. He played. He did not give up any sacks after week five in 2018. Also, Notre Dame played Clemson in a Cotton Bowl in 2018. He did not give up a sack in that game against Clemson. Clemson had a very good front seven in 2018. So, it just goes to show how good this player was and the value that the Dolphins were able to get at this position. Hunter Long was my next guy who the Dolphins secured in the third round, went to Boston College, had more catches than Kyle Pitts last year, very short-handed. Weak spot was not a good blocker. And, I'm, and of course, we're starting to see the NFL value pass catchers and tight ends that are able to do that more and more, right? They're not blocking. They don't have their, they're not always down on the line of scrimmage. Sometimes they're going to be lined out wide, right? Hunter Long is a guy that can do that. He can make catches in the ends in the red zone, great red zone threat there and can get first downs. I think I saw a stat like 60% of his catches last year resulted in first downs. So this guy can move the sticks. He can score touchdowns and is going to be, once again, somebody that can help out a young quarterback like Tua and be a safety net there. So I like Hunter Long and overall, I like what the Dolphins were able to do in the draft to improve their team. Yeah. It seems like ever since Brian Flores and this new regime came into town, they've done everything possible to help improve this team and turn this team around. We all know that whenever a team is under the reins of Adam Gase, it doesn't look great at all, but <laughs> uh, so you can't improve that much, but, or you can't, you don't have to try enough to, to make it improve. But uh, I love what Brian Flores is doing with, uh, changing the whole franchise around and really finessing trading down, but then trading back up and getting an extra first round pick in the future out of that as well. 